Let us begin our celebration of love and thanksgiving in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the joy and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. To prepare our hearts to remember and give thanks, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, our help and guide, make your love the foundation of our lives. May our love for you express itself in our eagerness to do good for others. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. For centuries the Israelites were convinced that they would always remain the only recipients of God's love. But God's plan was different. Through the prophet Isaiah, he announced that one day all the peoples of the world would participate in the everlasting banquet of his kingdom. A proclamation from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face, the reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked, let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose, beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. At the conclusion of his letter to the Christians of Philippi, St. Paul emphasizes his detachment from material things. He also manifests his gratitude for their generous financial assistance. These are virtues that we, too, should practice today. 
A proclamation from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need, in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Word was made flesh and lived among us. To all who did accept Him He gave power to become children of God. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us open our minds, open our lips, and open our hearts to the reading and the living of the Holy Gospel as written by St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast. But, they refused to come. A second time, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, and therefore, into the main roads, and invite to the feast, whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness, outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. My dear friends, what we heard is the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Pleasant greetings to you. Today let us talk about Christian fashion, that is, dressing up for the wedding banquet. First let's talk about some fashion terms and what fashion is not. Welcome to the world of Christian fashion. First off, let us be educated about the X in our title. No, X is not the X meaning nothing, it's not the X that marks the spot, neither is it the X of movie ratings. And, most importantly, it is never a kind of blasphemy against Christ and Christianity. It is the Greek letter key. When combined with the row, the key row is an ancient symbol for Christ. Hence, in Christian fashion, XP is not read by intelligent Christians as XP, because that's a Windows version. Rather, it is read as Christ. An X and is read as Christian. This Christmas time, don't feel guilty seeing Christmas written this way. However, when someone greets you Merry X Mass, or simply Happy Holidays, then you should be bothered. Something is terribly wrong with that person's view of the season. Or, simply, that person does not know the Greek sacred symbols. Okay, with that off our chest, let's talk about Christian fashion. 
First, let us mention what clearly fashion is not. By fashion in the Christian sense, we do not mean the prevailing style or manner of dressing. It does not refer to a cuisine, literature, art, or architecture, popular within a given culture. It is not a physical garment in the current mode. It is not a synonym for glamour, beauty and style. It is not a synonym for fads and trends, and materialism. Never the styles of dress. So, what is fashion? So, what does fashion really mean? Fashion comes from the Latin root word, facere, meaning, to do, or to make. Hence, in the sense, it has to do with doing and making, particularly, a behavior that reflects an attitude. Here are some fashion vocabulary words that also deserve a second look. Do you know that at first, dressing up has clearly nothing to do with putting clothes on. It had nothing to do with styling nor with displaying. The word dress comes from the Middle English, dressen, meaning to arrange, taken from the Latin root word, dirigere, meaning to direct. So, to dress up oneself really means, to direct and arrange one's attitude and behavior. The word attire comes from Latin, ad, meaning to, and, tire, meaning rank or, order. Hence, the verb to attire is really to act and behave according to one's order or rank. The word garment, is from Old French garnem one, with roots from garnier, meaning to equip. Hmm, interesting, right? Hence, in this lecturette, my Christian fashion we refer to a Christian's, one, way of doing, making, behaving, and living Christian principles and values in one's life. Well, in short, it is the way you carry yourself around. 2. Manner of arranging and directing one's attitudes and, consequently, one's behavior, according to one's Christian status, order, or rank, as God's chosen one. And 3. Equipping oneself with the necessities and niceties, in preparation for the big banquet we all wait for. And let us add this note. Christian fashion is founded on God, who is the same yesterday, today and forever. Therefore, unlike the worldly fashion we know, Christian fashion never changes with the worldly times, nor is it dictated by human fads and trends. We have seen that fashion comes from the Latin root word facere, meaning to do or to make. It has to do with shaping, forming, doing, and making, particularly into a character and behavior that reflects an attitude. Christian fashion is about dressing up for one's wedding banquet. It is about touching and living in God's garment of faith, hope, and love. Now let us look deeply into the parable of the banquet. Let us have a look at the parable of the banquet. This parable of the kingdom of heaven is a picture of the coming judgment. The king gives a free invitation to the wedding banquet. No one has to earn his or her seat at the table. Both the good and the bad are encouraged to come into the feast. But here is a cultural note. Guests to a wedding feast in the time of Jesus were not expected to provide their own attire. They would be given robes on entering the banquet hall. The invitation was open. The feast was an unearned gift, and so was the necessary clothing. Its meaning? For the first Christians, the parallel was baptism. The early church placed robes on those coming out of the waters of baptism. The white robes were an outward sign of the inward grace of being clothed in Christ. For us today, in addition to our need for baptism, the proper garment is also our spirituality and righteousness in our moral, private, and public life and relationships. But remember that this open invitation has a most important requirement. Our proper garment. There are no exceptions and exemptions to this rule. Whether we are an early bird or a late comer, the king would still demand our proper garments of faith, hope and love.
Here are some action steps on how to prepare for the big banquet. Let me offer two fashion points of action. One, let us fashion or form the vision in our heart with faith. Begin with the end in mind. Of course, the big banquet the gospel speaks of is the end. We call it beatific vision, that is, being with God forever, seeing Him face to face. Let us begin with this vision, seek first this vision, and everything, every path, will be laid out for you, plus, your proper garment. This, you have to take in faith. 2. Let us fashion or develop by configuring, our priorities with love. This implies valuing all your relationships and your time. Remember, the depth of one's spirituality is reflected in one's depth of relationships and management of time. In another banquet lesson of Jesus in Matthew, he says, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. For I was hungry and you gave me food. In other words, the banquet is only for those who related to him through their neighbors. Psychiatrist and author M. Scott Peck said, Until you value yourself, you won't value your time. Until you value your time, you will not do anything with it. I agree. Author John Maxwell says that instead of thinking what you do, and what you buy, in terms of money, think about them in terms of time. Hmm, an interesting challenge. So, what do you think? What is worth spending most and the best of your time, and your life on? Is it something that moths, worms and termites will destroy in a couple of years? Beginning with the end in mind in this way, may change the way you manage your time now. Finally, let us learn from carpenters and tailors, the fashionistas who follow this rule of thumb. Measure twice. Cut once. First, fashion the vision in your heart. Namely, begin with the end in mind. You know, everything is created twice. First, there is the mental creation. And then secondly, the physical creation. For this man to be able to build, for example, this wonderful sand sculpture, he had first to imagine it in his head. The same is true, therefore, with the creation of man. Before man ever existed, God first envisioned him in his mind. And thus, the creation happened. Second, fashion your values. To begin with the end in mind means to decide on what your own value system is all about because your values will be the garment of your character. Your choice reflects who you choose to become. Let us look at the value of time. We often say, pagkatapos ng limang taong kong pagtatrabaho dito sa Saudi, makabibili rin ako ng sarili kong bahay. Meaning, of course, that dream house is going to cost five years and that is more or less one-tenth of your adult life. For the meantime, you sacrifice being with your young child. Instead of thinking, therefore, what you do and what you buy in terms of money, please think about them in terms of time. What is worth spending most and the best of your time and your life on. An indication of one's proper garment is how one manages his or her time. How one puts in the big rocks first. Remember our analogy? Beginning with the end in mind in this way may change the way we manage our time now. And here is a final reminder.
Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Being sorry at the 11th hour may not be profitable all the time. So, turn away from sin now and believe in the gospel now na. May God bless our hearts with the taste of Christian fashion. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us lift up to God all our prayers. After every petition, we shall say, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Church, the Eucharistic community invited to participate in the banquet of God's love. May its joyful participation be an inspiration to all peoples to accept God's invitation with gratitude. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Holy Father, our Bishop, and all other spiritual leaders, may their example constantly support us in responding to God's call without delay. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who feel more attracted by earthly allurements than by gospel values, may they come to understand that what really matters in life is to do God's will and work for His kingdom. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For all indigenous peoples, may they be empowered to protect their ancestral lands, rich cultural heritage, and their rights as a people, with the full support of the government and their fellow Filipinos. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us gathered here for our Sunday worship, may we always participate in it with a heart purified from sin and adorned with works of faith and charity. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, our generous and patient host, we thank you for inviting us to the wedding banquet of your Son, Jesus. Grant us the grace that we may always show gratitude for such a privilege by living in a way that pleases you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, which earth has given human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray now, my dear friends, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, our loving Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Lord, accept the prayers and gifts we offer in faith and love. May these Eucharist bring us to your glory. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, Father, we offer you this life-giving bread and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Roberto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together as God's children, with confidence, we call on our Heavenly Father in the words of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not allow us to fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The love and peace of Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of love and peace. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus grant us healing and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Panis vivus et vitalis, hodie proponitur. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, may the body and blood of your Son give us a share in his life, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known, that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer our prayers. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the abundant spiritual blessings you bestowed upon us. We are grateful as well for the material blessings no matter how abundant or scarce they are, for our stewardship. We pray in your mighty name to break any evil seals and consecrations, curses and spells, unholy ties, links, evil relationships and bondages that had been cast to, made over, or forged through the material and monetary blessings we receive, own, and keep. Help us remember that these are given for your glory and for the greater service of the Church and of humanity. And we ask you to bless all our relationships. These are yours, O Lord, and we submit all these under your most glorious authority. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, loving and serving the Lord in one another. Thanks be to God. Palakpaan natin ang Panginoon.